Hi, I'm Les Raker, the director of the Rural Heritage Museum. And this exhibition, Our Story, This Place, has been a real pleasure to present to the people of Western North Carolina. This has told the story of African American education from um, emancipation through 1965. We paid particular attention to the Marcel Anderson Rosenwald School, which is the last standing Rosenwald School left in Western North Carolina. The research that we put together for this exhibition has come from archival information that we glean from records of the uh, county, from the school district uh, board, school board records, um, uh, from newspaper clippings, from interviews with people who attended the Rosenwald School or people who uh, grew up in Mars Hill, African Americans, recollecting things that their relatives taught them. This, uh, then the exhibition spans quite a bit of time. We actually trace African American history back to the late 19th century. We've told some really cool stories in this exhibition. Um, one of the uh, important story we talked about was Joseph Anderson. Joseph Anderson was a slave who was uh, kept by one of the founding trustees of this uh, university, which was at that time called the French Broad Institute. And uh, as the story goes, when they were building the, the college back in, uh, in the 1850s, uh, the trustees ran out of money and couldn't pay the contractor for the initial building. And this slave, Joseph Anderson, was taken as collateral to pay that bill. And he was, at the time, quite valuable um, and uh, quite interesting person and they raised the money within four days and he was released from prison where he was kept before he was going to be sold. That is really the beginning of the legacy of education here because his son went on to be on the, uh, uh, the colored school committee after, after emancipation. They were, he was very, they were both very involved with education. And as it happens, his great, great granddaughter was the very first African-American person to be accepted as a student here at Mars Hill College, um, now Mars Hill University. And she grew up here and was the very first one to accept it. We told that story here too. We told another story in this exhibition, that's uh, about Viola King Barnett, a real crusader for African-American education. Viola King Barnett was um, a humble woman. She worked as a domestic in the 1940s in Mars Hill, and she sent her children to the Mars Hill Anderson Rosenwald School. There were no African American high schools here in, in Madison County, and so when her children graduated from the Rosenwald School, the oldest two, as I understand it, stayed with relatives in Asheville so they could go to the African American school there, uh, Stevens Lee. But when her next children came along, because she had nine children, um, there was no place for them to stay in Asheville, so they couldn't go to high school because she couldn't get them all the way to Asheville. And so they did, started doing what all the children did here in Madison County who couldn't go to Asheville. They repeated the eighth grade over and over again because you were required to go to school until you were 16. Viola King Barnett did not think that was right or fair, and it wasn't. And so. Uh, she was encouraged by people here at Mars Hill University to write to the school superintendent for the state of North Carolina and advise him of her predicament. She had children, she wanted to go to high school, yet there was no high school for them and no way for them to get to Asheville. He wrote back to her in pretty short order and said in, in no uncertain terms, Ms. Barnett, you're right. Your children should have transportation to high school and because of your letter, all children in the state of North Carolina, black and white, will now receive transportation to high school. And so she's a real crusader, and here's a humble person here from Mars Hill, made a difference for the whole state of North Carolina with regard to education. This school then, their Anderson Rosenwald School, was a school of hope for the people who went there. The, the alumni from that school helped us with this exhibition. They talked to us about what it was like to go there. They had very good experiences there. They had very good education, dedicated teachers, and they went on to great success. 
They wouldn't have been able to without that school. But people went on, they went got college degrees, uh, PhDs, they became leaders, not only in Asheville, but they moved on to Cincinnati, Chicago, elsewhere, got jobs in New York City, some worked on Wall Street, because of getting a good education. And that's the story we're telling here. Uh, the, it's the story of the South, of the New South, in microcosm here from Madison County. And it's a, a county that is progressive, has been progressive since the founding of the college in terms of its attitude towards African Americans, especially since the Civil War. And, and that's the story that we're telling here. The uh, Marcel Anderson Rosenwald School was built in 1928, or opened in 1928. And it received funds to do that from the Rosenwald Foundation. Uh, Julius Rosenwald was um, a magnet. He was the CEO and, and, and president of Sears Roebuck in the late 19th and early 20th century. And he and Booker T. Washington became friends. He, uh, Booker T. Washington encouraged him to support elementary education. Booker T. Washington really felt that elementary education, especially ele elementary education with a vocational aspect to it, was critical for African Americans a a after the Civil War. He helped then uh, to fund um, uh, schools through a matching grant fund throughout the former Confederacy in the states in the South. And there were some 5,300 so-called Rosenwald schools built. They provided the plans, they provided about a third of the funds, and then the, the white school district board and also the people of the community who were going to use the school each contributed about a third to the school, and that's what happened here at Mars Hill. And um, uh, this became then the, the model really throughout the South. Uh, in North Carolina, we had the, there were built the most African American um, Rosenwald schools, almost 900 of them. However, as I mentioned, the Rosenwald School here in Mars Hill is the very last one standing in this, um, in all of Western North Carolina. There is a committee, a rehabilitation committee that has been formed that is uh, attempting to fix up, rehab the building and turn it into an exhibition space and also a community center. And they're well on their way to raising funds for that and very dedicated people on a volunteer board putting together their time to make this school remain and it will become a testament really to the good things that happen with that school and it'll be a place for school groups and individuals and tourists to visit for years and years to come. Another story we like to tell related to this exhibition is that of Orlean Simmons, Orlean Graves Simmons. Orlean attended the Anderson Rosenwald School. Her mother taught there. Um, and she was from Mars Hill, lived here in Mars Hill on the other side of the campus and loved Mars Hill. In uh, talking to her about her childhood experiences, she always felt that one day she wanted to go to Mars Hill College. After completing her time at the Rosenwald School, she attended Stevens Lee High School in Asheville. At the end of her high school days, all of her fellow students were talking about where they were going to go to college or what they were going to do. And at first she kept quiet about it, but eventually she admitted that she wanted to go to Mars Hill College. And they say, why do you want to go to that white school up in the mountain? And she said, because that's the one I want to go to. I've loved that place. That's where I'm from and so on. When she was old enough then, in 1960, she began applying. She wrote an application to the school, talked to them how she wanted to teach she, she had a real vision for herself and what she wanted to do in her, in her letter that she wrote, which we have in this exhibition. But she was rejected. Her story is that she didn't have to go any further than a mirror to know why she wasn't accepted. It was because of the color of her skin. She was devastated. In fact, they told her in their, her rejection letter that it was because they were full, except she found there were several students who accepted after, the fa after she had been rejected so that she knew that wasn't the case. She was very disappointed because she really felt like Mars Hill was her home. But she befriended the uh, pastor of the Mars Hill Baptist Church who was on the board of trustees and really uh, related her story and he didn't uh, like what happened to her at all and rallied the trustees and the president, Blackwell and others at the time and said that Orlean should be accepted to the school and they had a special meeting and they voted 
and they wrote letters and she was admitted. And she was the first African-American to be admitted to not only Mars Hill College, but we think to any Baptist college in North Carolina. And probably one of the first African-Americans to be accepted into a traditionally white school in the South. After she graduated from here, she moved on. She became the director of the YMI Institute in Nashville. She founded the very first Martin Luther King breakfast in the Southeast. It's still the largest in the Southeast. And she's had many other achievements. Her daughter and her granddaughter both graduated from Mars Hill College. A couple of years ago, she got a telephone call from a woman who said, my name is Susie Anderson and my great-great-grandfather owned your great-great-grandfather. I've been searching for you and I want to apologize for that. And she held her breath. But the, the story goes that they, they met and they've been meeting. Susie Anderson lives in Hawaii, but they've been getting together and they're writing a book called There's Only One Anderson. They've become very good friends. And that's the story of Orlean, which you've seen in this exhibition, is that her great-great-grandfather was a slave who was owned by a man named Anderson who had to give him up as collateral on the debt of the very first building that was being constructed here to become Mars Hill College. It was actually called the French Broad Institute at the time. And in four days, he was released because they were able to raise the additional money that was needed as he was being kept as collateral for the, to pay the contractor who was uh, building the building to be the college. Some years ago, the college recognized that because of Joseph Anderson's unique contributions to really the beginnings of the college, he and his family would now be considered a founding member, founding family of Mars Hill College. And to this day then, Orlean and her relatives are welcomed at the Founders Day ceremonies at Mars Hill College and Mars Hill University. And Orlean is really grateful to now have Susie Anderson also, because her great-great-grandfather was a founding trustee, to be sitting at her side at these Founders Day uh, celebrations from Mars Hill University. Well, thank you very much for watching this uh, video about this exhibition and uh, feel free to come and visit us. Uh, we're open every day from 11 until 5, only closed on Mondays, and the ad admission is free. And our mission is really to document the rural heritage of Western North Carolina uh, for, and, and the Southern Appalachians. So thank you once again.